Welcome to the Life United Podcast. We are all about helping you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. We know that today's message is going to be a blessing to you. We're in a series called Headspace, and uh, I want to talk to you today specifically in a, about an area of your mind that you can, and I'm going to say it this way, you can easily deal with if you want to. Now, I, that's the key. You got to you got to want to. And you also have to recognize how destructive what I'm going to share with you uh, can be if you don't deal with it. And we're going to talk today about worry. Yeah, worry. Uh, you know, everybody is guilty. We've all been challenged. But I learned something early on in my Christian walk that helped me so much uh, not to worry. And at the end of this, I'm going to show you that. But I want you to uh, listen to this scripture in Luke chapter 21. Jesus said this, take heed to yourself, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing. I hope you're not carousing. You know, I used to I used to be a a um, a carouser <laughs> before I got saved. I hope you're not a carouser uh, and um, and drunkenness. Absolutely not. But here's the one that you need to hear because it's just as bad as drinking and carousing, and that is cares of this life that the day come on you unexpectedly. If you're not careful, your heart can be weighed down by the cares of this life, that that day come on you unexpectedly, and it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Now listen, here's your instruction. Watch therefore, pray always that you may be worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Now, let me just share this with you. Uh, Rick Renner, who uh, has a great commentary called Sparkling Gems. Uh, if you don't have it, you ought to get it. It's, it really, he, he does an excellent job with different scriptures. In it, he talks about two words, cares and life. And so when he, he, the way that he did this is these words are connected together, the cares of this life in this scripture. And, and the root word um, for life is bios, the Greek word for life. Uh, and um, it's actually where we get our word biology, which is about living things. But when it comes um, to this word, it's called biotikos. And I know I'm not saying that right, but it describes things of life are pertaining primarily to the events, incidents, and episodes that occur in one's life. So you've got to understand that this, this um, cares of life is something that you cannot live with. And Jesus taught it this way. The more you see the day coming, the more you better pay attention and not get weighed down by the cares of life. We've gone through a season in the world, really, but in our nation, in our cities, over COVID and all the stresses and all the difficulties. But listen to me today. In that and through that, you are responsible not to care or to worry in that season. Well, I'm worried that I'm going to get COVID. Well, what difference does that make whether you worry about it or not? Uh, everybody needs to protect, take precautions, you know, if you feel like that's what you need to do, do it. But don't worry about it and don't let it consume your life. Um, there is a place, and this is kind of where I want to focus today. There is a place in your life, now listen to this, where it's impossible for the Father to help you. You got to hear what I'm saying. You say, well, God can do anything. There is a place in life where God cannot intervene. Now listen to this. He cannot fulfill your worries and anxieties, nor will he respond to them. Now I'm going to show you this in the Word today, but you've got to understand something. Worry 
and being careful or having the cares of this life weighing down on you, it's your responsibility to deal with that, not God's. God's not going to answer those in your life. Now, he will bring an answer to you about a challenge that you have in your life, but your worry is your problem, and you've got to deal with it. You've got to make up your mind, I am not going to be a worrier. I am not going to worry, and if you do, uh, you're going to be amazed at what God can do in your life. In Mark chapter 4, there's an example of this. In verse 38, the, the, uh, the disciples are on a boat. They're in a storm. Jesus is asleep in the back while they're, on, uh, uh, while they're in the midst of this storm. And they wake him up in verse 38, and they say, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Now, notice this. They had to wake him up to tell him, You don't care. We're perishing. Well, I don't know whether you know, he was in the same boat they were in. But yet they were worrying that they were going to perish. Now, I understand they had been in boats, they had been in storms, and they knew the disastrous effects of storms. But listen to me. They had Jesus in the boat with them. And yet they're, still, they're here and, uh, and saying, do you not care that we're perishing? Listen to me. Jesus will not worry with you or alongside of you. He's not going to do it. In fact, he rebuked them for being fearful. In one, trend, in one uh, uh, account, says, where's your faith? He rebuked them because of the way they were behaving, because they were worrying. There was care. There was fretting. They, they thought they were going to die. And they wake Jesus up, and I like, I like this. Thanks for waking, waking, I think this is what Jesus might have said. Thanks for waking me up to tell me we're perishing. <laughs> you know, like Jesus, the, the, the Son of God, is, is going to be okay. He's not going to perish. I've said it like this many times. If they had not been willing to wake him up or had not been willing uh, to overcome their worries, listen to me. Jesus might have just floated off on that, on that cushion he was on, and they would have sunk, had to hold on to something to, to, to live. So listen to me today. Jesus cannot help you worry. Don't you care? Now, that's a dangerous place because a lot of people, um, they get to that place. Uh, Jesus is not going to worry along with you. Well, I sure am worried about Sam. I just don't know whether he's going to make it. I know he's got this problem. He's got that. He's got this issue. I sure hope he makes it. That's not the way Jesus thinks. Jesus thinks as an overcomer. Jesus thinks according to the word of God, and he expects us to do the same exact thing. Listen to what this, the word of God says. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, this is going to help you. So listen, you got to hear this. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Now, now listen to me. <clears throat> Did you notice here that it says you have to cast your care on him? That's your responsibility. The word care is the same word. It means to worry. Cast your worries. Cast your cares on him. And I'm going to show you how to do this. So just stick with me. But listen to me. Cast your care over on him. Why? For he cares for you. Now, isn't it interesting? It doesn't say God recognizes your cares and your worries and he cares for you. No. It says get rid of your cares because he cares for you. There's a totally different dynamic there that you have to understand and worries that, that, that you have to, uh, to understand about worry. Listen, one translation says, for you are his personal concern. The Amplified Bible says, for he cares for you affectionately, cares about you watchfully. Isn't that awesome? He cares about me. But there's nothing he can do about that if I'm going to carry the care and the worries of life and not cast them on him. He wants to help you. He wants to help me in our difficult times, in our times when we're most tempted to worry. Listen to me. 
God wants to work in your life, but you got to understand your responsibility, <coughs> excuse me, is to cast your care on him. Let him handle it would be the best way to put it. And when you do, God can work in your life. Jesus spelled this out for us over in uh, Matthew chapter 6. And I'm going to read this portion of scripture to you. Because it, it, Jesus spells out what, what our responsibility uh, and our instructions in regard to worry. Listen to this. Therefore, I say to you, you ready? Do not worry about your life. Do not worry about your life. That's where the cares of life okay, is worrying about life. Jesus said just the opposite. Do not have cares or worries about your life. And by the way, that includes all those in your sphere of life, okay? Because sometimes our worry is not for us. It's for family or it's for our job or something else. Listen, it says do not worry about your life. What you eat, what you drink, about your body, what you'll put on. In other words, bottom line, every area, even down to the most basic needs of life, Jesus said, don't worry. Now notice this. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Then he goes on and gives an example so you can understand this care and this desire for God to work in your life. Listen to this. Listen to what it says. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? All right, you ready? Listen to this. Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? You can't add an inch. You can't add a quarter of an inch. Well, I'm so short. I'm vertically challenged. I don't know what I'm going to do. You can't do anything about it. Quit worrying about it. You are what you are. Hey, I know people that worry about being too short. And then I have other people that I've been friends with complain about being too tall. Come on. Well, there's a perfect spot. Listen, the moment you say, well, you know, 6'1 is the perfect spot for a man. I'm telling you, if I could just be 6'1, then somebody 6'2 would come along and you say, man, I wish I could be like them. I, I don't understand. I wish I could be more than what I am. That's not the way God works. Listen, you've got to grab hold of this in your life. And I know that sounds foolish, but people worry about the most mundane things. It's amazing how it works. Now listen to what it says. He goes on to say, now you, you got to follow me here. Why do you worry about your clothes? Look at the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't work for what they've got. They just clothe. God clothes them. Now listen to what else it says. I say to you, listen, Solomon in all his glory is not arrayed like one of those beautiful flowers. I know I added that, but that's what it is. Now, if God so clothed the grass of the fields, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? Here's the word. O ye of little faith. See, your faith is what counteracts your worry. So you got to hear that. Now, listen to what else he said. Therefore, don't say, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? For all these things the Gentiles seek. You know your heavenly Father knows that you have all these needs. Now listen, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. you, you got to understand that. Now listen to this. This is very important. I don't have time to go into all this, but listen to this last verse. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. See, listen, worry is reaching out into the future and bringing it into the present. You can't live your life like that. You can't walk in life like that. I, I like this. This is a quote that I found. Listen to this. Worry not about possible troubles of the future. If they come, 
you are but anticipating and adding to their weight. In other words, listen, if they do not come, your worry is useless. In either case, it is weak and vain and a distrust of God's providence or what God will do. Here's the thing about worry. If, if, you don't, if you worry about something tomorrow, when it comes, if something bad does happen, it's worse because you've been worrying about it. See, I told you. Oh, my God, I told you. I heard one quote that said this. It says, he said, don't tell me worry doesn't, hap- doesn't help. Everything I've worried about didn't come to pass. Well, <laughs> that's really kind of the way some people think, you know, but that's not true. Worry does not help. And then when it's added on to what trouble you have to face, oh my goodness, it makes it, it, makes it even worse. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, one of the greatest preachers uh, of, of the modern era, uh, said this, anxiety does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows, but only empties today of its strength. See, if you're worried about something down the road, Okay, listen to me. It's sucking your strength out of you where you are right now. Corey Ten Boone said almost the same thing. Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. I mean, hey, you you got to understand and realize that that you've got to make up your mind that I am not going to be a worry. I'm not going to look down the road and say, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do tomorrow? Well, you know, in 10 years, this is going to happen. What am I going to do in 20 years? Well, I got to make a plan. Making a plan is fine as long as you're not doing it out of fear and you're not doing it out of worry. Because what's going to happen is <clears throat> when you get down the road, you're going to find out I've been worrying about this and all of a sudden exactly what I worried came to pass. And then you've got to deal with 10 years of worry and plus whatever the issue is. Listen to me. You've got to get that out of your mind. It's in your head. Quit doing it. Listen, worry is a habit. <laughs> you've got to grab hold of this. Listen, worry is a habit. I, I, I pick on Becky's grandmother because she was a world-class worrier. I mean, <clears throat> man, she worried about everything. I was in the Philippines one time and she called Becky all worried because something was going on in Libya. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, uh, halfway around the world, actually around the world, and she's worried I'm going to be affected in the Philippines by something that's happening in Libya. Some people just, they got, they got to have something to worry about. It's like it shows that they care, but it's not true it doesn't show that you care. It shows that you have a distrust for what God can do in your future. You better be careful of it. <clears throat> I, like this, I like this quote I found. And I know I'm reading a lot of them, but they're, some of them are funny. Um, I, I, in fact, one of them I like, it, it's, it's really funny. Don't worry about being a kleptomaniac. You can always take something for it. Okay, well, I thought that was funny. But listen, I like this one. Listen, you ready? People get so in the habit of worry that if you save them from drowning, put them on the bank to dry in the sun with hot chocolate and muffins, they wonder whether they're going to catch a cold. <laughs> That's really the way some people live their lives. It's a habit. You, you get, I, I've been around people. It, it, I mean, you can, you can try to soothe them with the word and with confidence, and, and they'll find something to worry about. Out of the midst of everything, they'll find something to worry about. I like this quote. It says, it's not a natural state of human life nor is it necessarily a positive thing. Worry is just an automatic habit of thinking and responding to certain events in life. It is produced by specific thoughts and behaviors that get triggered automatically inside our bodies. Automatically gets triggered inside our bodies. In other words, it has no business being there, but it automatically gets triggered inside of our bodies. 
And you've got to be careful with your life because if you're not careful, you'll get caught up in that. It, and, and listen, the worse the times are, the more difficulties they are, the more easily it is to be consumed by worry. Well, I tell you, inflation, you can't, you know, buying gas today, it's a dollar and 50 cents more than it was a year ago. What am I going to do if it goes up another dollar? Well, listen, it hadn't gone up another dollar. You still put gas in your tank. You cannot allow yourself to get consumed by that because it will, it will bind you up and keep you from faith, which God can produce if it goes to $10 a gallon. If you've got faith, God can provide for you. Because I remember a time when, when gasoline, not only was it high, you couldn't get it. In, the, in America, you couldn't get You had to get in line to get gas. Isn't that crazy? But you know what? God can provide even in those circumstances. You can't worry about it. You got to get off of it. Now, I, I just kind of feel this. Probably somebody is watching me right now. Oh, my Lord, could it get that bad? Hey, get off of that. Don't live your life that way. Worry is going to des destroy you. Cares and anxieties can always be challenged by the Word of God. But the other is true as well. Cares, listen to me, and anxieties, worry can also challenge the Word of God and, and literally make it of no effect in your life. The word care literally means to divide, listen to this, to divide from the Word of God. It's, it's the idea of dividing through distraction. If, if the devil can get you distracted into circumstances and what's going to happen or what's not going to happen, he can divide you from the source of victory in your life, which is the Word of God. Jesus said, don't worry. That means distracting care. Don't worry. Distract. What's it do? What are you being distracted from? You're dis being distracted from your heavenly Father, His provision, what God's Word says, and what you should believe and act on from the Word of God. Over in Mark chapter 18, it talks about the sower sowing the Word. And, and in verse 18, it says, Now there are ones that are sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the Word. And the cares of this world, you got it? Deceitfulness of riches, the desire for other things, entering in chokes the word and it becomes unfruitful. Doesn't mean you don't know the word, it just means it becomes unfruitful. See, the cares of this life, I want you to listen to me, the cares of this life, worry will choke the word's effectiveness in your life. There have been many times in my life, in fact, I've had to deal with this, and it's a challenge, but you do it. Well, I'll wake up in, in, you know, at 3 in the morning, can't go back to sleep. All of a sudden, your mind starts thinking about bad things. Well, what about 10 years from now? Well, what about this? Well, what about this? Well, what, you didn't make provision for this, or well, you better be thinking about this. All of a sudden, you start laying there in the bed with your mind worrying. What do you do about that? You say, you know what? My God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. You counteract those thoughts with your words, with the word of God. You'd be amazed at how worry will lay down, get out of the way when you speak the word of God in authority. You just got to make up your mind. That's what you're going to do because li listen to what it says. It says it enters in and chokes the word and it becomes unfruitful, unfruitful, unfruitful. That means it's there. It just doesn't produce anything. Now, I, I hate to tell you this, but the, you may be out there today and that may be exactly who you are. I may be identifying you today because, listen to me, there are a lot of Christians today that are a number one worriers. 
You can't live your life that way. You can't fret over circumstances of life and, and uh, how things are going or how bad it looks. Or, or You can't live your life in that arena. You've got to live your life in the re- arena of faith, of overcoming, of believing God and letting God work in your life. Well, so-and-so, they did me wrong, and I'm worried that this is going to happen. Wait a minute. Listen to me. You let God be the avenger. You leave it alone. Too many people are wanting the government to avenge for them or wanting people to avenge for them. When God is your believer, God's the one who takes care of that. He said, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Your justification is not in who you are. Your justification is in who God said you were. He said you were the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's why Jesus said, don't worry. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You let God take care of things, you'd be amazed at how worry-free, stress-free you would be. And let me tell you something else, how great of decisions you make, because when you start worrying and you start fretting, you're going to make bad decisions. You just do. You make bad decisions. You can't let live your life that way. So you've got to know and understand This, listen to me, the voice of the word of God and worry do not abide in the same place. The voice of the word of God and worry do not abide in the same place. You just got to make up your mind which one you're going to believe and which one you're going to declare and and, and not allow it to be uh, in you and in your mind and work in you all the, all the time and con- constantly work and control your life. There, there's a fourfold negative to worrying, okay? These are not deep, but, but listen, okay? First of all, <clears throat> you, you, you <clears throat> it accomplishes nothing, okay? Worry accomplishes nothing. It, it doesn't help. It doesn't, it, you can't fret over things that you can't change. If, if you can change it, that's, that's a great thing. Uh, if you can't change it, then you've got to make up your mind. You're just going to go on and let God do something in your life. But you can't allow yourself to be controlled by that worry. You can't allow yourself to be weighed down by, by that worry. So, uh, the first thing is you've got you've got to understand. Listen, you got to hear this. It accomplishes nothing. Second thing, it's not good for you. It it it, it will hurt you physically. There are studies that have been made about people who worry, and it it affects their body. It affects their whole body. Proverbs twelve. I'm gonna read you a couple of translations. Proverbs twelve. Verse 25 in the New King James says, Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. I like the New Living Translation. Worry weighs a person down, an encouraging word cheers a person up. Worry weighs a person down. It has side effects. Worry has side effects. It'll, it will literally weigh you down. And, and the King, New King James says it will cause you to enter into depression. And the thing is, most of it never comes to pass. It doesn't even come, to, it is, it doesn't even, uh, come into your life. And, 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 and you, can't, you, can't ever, you can't ever get anything resolved by it. I like this, trans, this quote. It says, The art of resting the mind and the power of dismissing from all its care and worry is probably one of the secrets of energy in, a great, in great men. You have to lay aside worry. You cannot let it control your life. You've got to let it go in your life. All right? The third thing is this. It puts your focus in the wrong direction. It puts your focus always in the negative. Never in the positive, always in the negative. It, it, it puts you in a, in a bad place. And the last thing is this, uh, it's opposite of trusting God. 
It's the very opposite of trusting God. Uh, I'm going to read this. Mahatma Gandhi said this, There is nothing that wastes the body like worry. And one who has any faith in God should be ashamed to worry about anything whatsoever. Okay? So you've got to know <laughs> that that's where you have to live your life, and you've got to walk in that and, and because it's the opposite of trusting God. If you're a worrier, you're not trusting God. You're trusting something that's out there that can't even be explained. It's, it's nebulous. It's, it doesn't mean anything. And maybe you've had some negative things happen in your life. But don't carry those things out into your future. They're part of your past. Don't keep the, keep, let worry keep things alive in your life. Because let me tell you something that the Lord showed me about this. Jesus said sufficient for the day are the troubles of the day. Okay? So if you start worrying about something, you're going to start attracting that worrier, that worry, and you're going to attract trouble in your life way above and beyond what you should because all of a sudden all those things you worry about seem to come to pass at one time. And you can get overwhelmed by that. I, worry attracts. Don't attract stuff by your worry. Leave it alone. Sufficient is the day, Jesus said, for the trouble that'll come. You can handle today. Tomorrow's a whole different ball game. The Alcoholics Anonymous, which has done great things for many, many people, one of their tenets is so simple. Today, live today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Live today. And it's delivered a lot of people from alcohol just by living that one day at a time. You've got to make up your mind. That's how you're going to live your life, and you're going to trust God. You've got to make up your mind. You're going to trust God. Now, listen, I, I've got to skip some things here because I'm running out of time, but, but listen to this. The problem is that we get locked in patterns of anxious thought that hold us down. You get locked in these negative, anxious worrying thoughts, and they lock you down. One, one quote says this, and I, I love this. Worry, listen, is a thin stream of fear trickling through the mind. If encouraged, it cuts a channel into which all thoughts are drained. Boom. Listen. The same, same person said this, it ain't no use putting up your umbrella till it rains. Okay, leave these thoughts alone. I like what it says. A thin stream of fear trickling through the mind. And if you encourage it, you meditate on it, you leave it in your mind, it cuts a channel and then all other thoughts drain into that channel. So everything, your worry defines how everything else, well, I can't do this because, uh, you know, I'm worried about this or I can't act this way because I'm worried about this. And all of a sudden, you get caught up and your worry actually dictates the rest of the things that you do in your life or you don't do. So you've got to be careful how you live your life. All right, now listen. Here's the key to this whole thing. And this is what I learned. And I've talked about this many times here at Life United. But here's what I learned that, that helped me so much in the beginning, uh, uh, as a beginning Christian. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says this, Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, I love this, will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. You can have a guard. The Amplified Bible says it mounts guard over your mind. So listen to me today. The casting of your care 
through specific prayer will change your life. Okay? Notice this. It says, first of all, in everything, in, er in every circumstance and in everything, every circumstance and everything by prayer. All right? Now, stop a minute. Because prayer is a big word, okay? It's got lots of different meanings based on how it's, how it's being portrayed here. The word prayer here means to pour out. You know, there's nothing wrong with going to the Lord and saying, Now, Lord, look, um, we're in a financial bind right now. And, and you know it and I know it. But I'm not going to worry about it. That's pouring out prayer. That's just talking to the Lord, okay? But then it says, and I, I like this, the, the next part of this, by prayer and supplication. That word supplication there means definite request. So, Lord, now we've talked about this. You know I'm struggling in this area, but here it is. I'm going to open my Bible, and I am going to pray, and I believe, Lord, that Philippians 4.19 says, you will supply all my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I ask you to supply this need. That's a definite request. But then guess what else it says? With thanksgiving. After you've done that, the way to keep worry out after you prayed is to thank God for the answer to your prayer. Keep your focus on that. With thanksgiving, continually make your wants known to God. Thank you, Father, that you supply all my needs. Lord, I glorify you today. I magnify you. I thank you, Father, that you said what things wherever I desire when I pray, believe I receive and I'll have them. Thank you, Father, my needs met. <clears throat> you keep your focus in that direction. Worry will fall aside. That stream, as we read earlier, will dry up. And you've got to understand that and know that. How do you do that? What are you doing? You're casting all your care on him. Why? Because he cares for you. you. Cast your care on him because he cares for you. And that's where you've got, it's a matter of value. You're more valuable than birds. You're more, God desires to provide for you. He desires to clothe you. He desires to meet your needs. Jesus died for that. And you've got to make up your mind you're going to start believing that and quit fretting over it. And when you start doing that, it is amazing what God can do for you. Proverbs 16, 3 says, commit or roll your works on the Lord and he'll establish your thoughts. He'll establish your thoughts. See, when you cast your care over on him and you put the word of God first, all of a sudden you start thinking different. Isn't that good news? You start thinking different. He will sustain you. You start thinking different. Now, let me show you this, because if you read uh, Philippians 4 and, and, you, and you just read uh, the, the first part of that, verses 6 and 7, you miss the whole thing about casting your care. Listen to what it says in verse 8. Finally, my brother, in other words, after you've cast the care over on him and he's guarding your heart and your mind, it says this, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, now listen to this, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything that's praiseworthy, meditate or think on these things. There it is. You have to understand that. The things which you've learned and received and heard and saw uh, in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. In other words, Paul was saying, listen, you got to think different. You've got to think according to the Word of God. You've got to find good things to think about. Listen, if all you do is think about the negative, if all you do is watch all the television news and the negatives and all the arguments from this side, that side, all you're going to do is get over into a negative world. That's not what the Word of God tells us to do. It tells us to think a totally different way. Things are good. Things are just, pure, lovely, good report. Think on these things. 
That's how we're to live our lives. And, and you've got to decide that's how I'm going to live my life. <clears throat> you've got to give room in your mind, and I may talk about this Sunday. You've got to give room in your mind for what God wants. You've got it filled up with the wrong things. You've got it filled up with garbage. You've got it filled up with negatives. You've got to back out of that, fill it up with the Word of God, think on good things, things of good report, things of virtue, things that are valuable. And when you do, God starts working supernaturally. I mean, I'm telling you, it's an awesome way to live your life. <clears throat> doesn't mean that, I like what that, that, that quote said, doesn't mean worry is not going to try to trickle in. Just don't give it any place. Don't give it any place. Don't let it become a, a river where every thought floods into that and you, everything's judged by that. You can't live your life that way. Think on those good things. Think on the Word of God and let God work greatly in your life. He will. Don't worry. Don't let that be your life, don't worry. And I believe God can do something great for you. I wish I could pray the worry out of your life right now. I can't, <clears throat> but I can pray this. Let me pray and we'll be, we'll be finished. Father, I pray for every person who's listening right now that you open their eyes, open their minds, open their hearts to a different way of living, a way where your word controls their thoughts, where the good things, the things of virtue, the things that are praiseworthy control their thoughts and not all the negatives. Lord, that that worry will dry up in their minds and the word of God will replace it and be productive in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, I love you. Look forward to seeing you Sunday. I'm going to have a great word for you Sunday. I believe you're going to be blessed by it. And, and I believe God's going to bless you. Hey, bring somebody. Listen, this, a lot of people struggling in their mind. This could help somebody, and you can bring them and let God work in their lives. God bless you. I love you today. Thanks for connecting with us today on the podcast. And you know, we'd love to connect with you in person at one of our campuses in Shreveport, Louisiana, or in Lake Charles, Louisiana. You can get all the information from our website, lifeunited.church. 